the capacitors are here, the capacitors are here, which includes these three right here, these three electrolytics, which will be C4A, B, and C. Now C4A is uh, 10 microfarads at 350 volts. C4B is 5 microfarad at 350 volts. And C4C, which is this gray one right here, is 150 microfarads at 50 volts. So we're ready to get back on the old TV. With any kind of luck, uh, we'll be able to finish up the top of this chassis uh, in this video. With any kind of luck, you never know what you're going to run into. Uh, I think what I'm going to do today is start out. I've already installed. I picked up some, you know, brass screws, and I've already uh, uh, inst uh, put them here to hold this uh, selenium rectifier on. I'm getting ready to take off the second one. Unfortunately, uh, you know, the next size longer that they had of these things was like a half inch longer, and that really sucks because it would stick way out like this one here is doing. And the whole idea is I'm trying to avoid these long screws. So I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and take this baby out of here. That looks like it's going to take two hands again. Let me go ahead and get this uh, done and I'll get back with you. Alright, uh, by the way, for those who have never seen the backside of one of these selenium rectifiers, that's what it looks like. All they are is a series of plates with, uh, I guess it's a selenium. Uh, in between, these act as heat shields. The plates act as heat shields to give it strength, and I, don't know, I think there's one other thing it does. But uh, there's plenty of information on these things on the internet. Just type in selenium rectifier, and it'll tell you all about it. All right, it's time to put the old screw in here. We'll go ahead and put that baby in there like so. And now I'll go ahead. Well, can't put it in yet. I'm gonna have to put it through here first. Do the old uh, terminal strip, like so. Then through the selenium rectifier. Alright, let me go ahead and do that, and then we'll just get this thing mounted back up, just like we did the other one. Well, as usual, old man Murphy has raised his head. It turns out, believe it or not, that this selenium rectifier is a little bit thicker in width than this one. So the screw doesn't quite go on all the way through enough to catch the threads on the nut. <laughs> well, what I'm going to do is solve that problem. I'm going to this uh, the back side of this selenium rectifier. See how high that thing is right there? I'm going to grind that down a little bit. I'm going to take the old moto tool, and just kind of give it a little few licks there to get it down enough to where this thing will catch uh, two or three th threads and give me a good ground because I need the ground on this one. You can see that this uh, diode is grounded. This one's not too big a deal. This one, uh, I need to be, I need to have that diode grounded. Uh, but you know, I might go ahead and remove this one again and grind it down a little bit too, so I have you know a much stronger support. I mean, that's pretty solid, but you know, I want them to be really solid because I don't want to be have to dig in this chassis again at a later date for something that I got too lazy to take care of when I had the chance. Well, I'm glad I went ahead and did that. It turns out uh, that's some sort of a fiber tube that I guess supports everything. I thought it was metal. Man, I just put the old grinder to that thing and it just took it down, you know, just lickety split. It didn't take but a few seconds and it, it's down there, so I've got it pretty far down now. I think I'll go ahead and do it after all to this one here. Give me plenty of thread to stick through there and pass it on. Well, as hoped, you can see that thing sticks through pretty good now. I've got the lock washer on, and next I'll put the nut. We are experiencing a momentous event here in Arkansas. One that took me away from the old TV chassis for a few seconds. We're getting some rain after months and months with no rain. Severe drought. Look at that. Look at that creek over there. Isn't that great? You can tell it's been a while since we've had any rain. Look at all the cups. Oh, look at that. Look at that rat. He says, what is this stuff? <laughs> we got a lot of cups and all kinds of crap floating down the water. You know, you, get, you always get that after a, you know, a, a long dry spell. And I don't think that water will come up into the, into the blacktop area. But if it does, you know something? I don't care. This is great. We have needed this so bad. 
Okay, it's the rain has slowed down a little bit. And, uh, I'm sorry to say, I wish it would have kept going for about another day or two, but you know we're still getting some. So it's back to the chassis, and we now have the brass screws in, both of them looking real good. These uh, old screws don't stick out, you know, past the edge of the bracket a half an inch or more. I didn't like that. These look much better, much much neater, the two of them. So we're done with that, and everything is nice and secure, very secure. It's now on to the next project. And the next uh, subject will be restuffing this last uh, uh, filter can or capacitor can. And uh, these are the three capacitors that I now have in it, and they're they're too tight. I'm going to have to remove them. You know, they won't even shake out. I mean, there may become a day, you know, down the pike when uh, some guy wants to untape it and remove the lid to check those caps to see if they're they're still good. And if he can't even get the top off of it because I've jammed those capacitors in there so tight, that's not going to be good for that person. So you want them loose where the, the top will just slip right off and the caps will remain where they're at. Uh, you know, without pulling the wires loose and every other thing also. So what I'm going to do is remove these, and they won't even shake out as you can see, but I'm going to remove these and put the smaller of the three on top of the two, if that makes sense. The small one on top of the two. And uh, I'll show you how that's done. Alright, as I said, we're going to put uh, one cap, one electrolytic on top of the other two. So they'll fit inside that can a whole lot easier, and you can see that right there. See, it just goes right up inside there and comes out. And I have twisted all of the negative leads together on all three caps. This long one right here will be where I hook the black wire that will go out through the bottom of the capac capacitor can on the, uh, on the chassis. Right here, I will solder this all together and then nip off these little extra pieces and kind of shove it down a little bit out of the way. So it won't matter even if it was to scrape on the can. It doesn't matter because the can is the negative anyway. The remaining leads you see here will come from the positive side of the capacitors. This is one. This is the other. And this is the third one on the back side right here. And when I get every, all the wires hooked up and everything's insulated from one another, then I'll go ahead and take a very, very thin piece of that silver exhaust manifold tape and I'll put all these together like that and run a very thin maybe oh I don't know maybe no more than three-eighths of an inch around the outside to kind of hold everything together and in place so when it goes up inside the can like so it won't be you know it won't want to be spreading apart wouldn't hurt anything but you know I, I don't like that idea I want each wire insulated from one another and a nice neat little package that goes up inside all right, the negative leads have been soldered together. Now I'll go ahead and nip off the ones I don't want, leaving me with the one that's left. But they'll all be connected to that one. So far, so good. Well, that's it. The wires have been soldered on. Uh, black is the ground. And then the remaining three I made... Red, white, and blue, my all-time favorite colors. And uh, we have heat shrink on to match. And I took the old heat gun, shrunk it down. Now I'm going to take this little band of uh, exhaust manifold tape. And I'm going to put it around that thing and tape that whole mess together like that. And I'm going to do it in a way to where the value of the capacitors can still be read. You know, you never want to... Uh, install capacitors whether they're the yellow kind in the bottom of a chassis or something of this nature you always want to have the value of the capacitor visible uh... i had a friend of mine who would bring me over chassis once in a while to kind of help him troubleshoot it and he always had the capacitors in where i couldn't even tell what the value was they always, he always had them facing the bottom of the chassis instead of outward where someone can you know have some information to work with uh, i finally got him to stop doing that i think i think he's Finally corrected all his bad habits now. All right, let me go ahead and tape that together. All right, there it is. Nice, neat little package. Perfect. And it slips right up in there. Just what we want. Let's drill some holes. I'm about to take this old drill and drill bit and drill a hole down through the bottom of this uh, capacitor, through that 
soft brown stuff. It's very soft. It's just an insulator. But and uh, I'll be running the uh, capacitor wires uh, down through that hole. All, the whole mess will go right down through that hole. And I, you know, you just don't want to be picking up the drill and start drilling holes. You want to find out what's on the other side. You know, you could be drilling into something that's very important. So let's go take a look at the bottom and see what's there. All right, there's the bottom of that uh, capacitor, and these will be the terminals we'll be soldering the capacitor wires to. And right smack in the middle, right where the drill would come through, is a wire. Son of a gun. They ran that thing right through there. That wire runs all the way down here and goes into the transformer. Ugh! Got to be careful. Got to be careful. So what I'm going to do, I think, is I can bend some of these tabs back out of the way just a little bit. You don't want to bend them too far. You don't want them to be touching the chassis. That's for sure. Bend it just a little bit. We have a little bit of leeway there, and then I can kind of maybe pull this wire up out of here a little bit. Just kind of play with it a little bit and get it out of the way so when the drill bit comes through. Now, I'm not going to run the drill bit all the way out the bottom here, you know, a half an inch or an inch or so. I'm just going to drill it down through until it finally breaks through. And then you just got to be mindful that there are wires down there. You got to be careful, you know. You got to be careful whenever you do any of this stuff, actually. And then when I get everything all uh, installed up at the top, you know, then you got to come back down again and make sure that, you know, you don't have any problems. You don't want any of these contacts to be bent over and touch the chassis. You don't want any of the wires to be, to have the insulation cut along the edge of that hole. You know, you got to kind of scope out the entire thing and make sure it's safe. All right, here we go. We're going to use a little variable speed drill with a very sharp drill bit. I'm just going to go slowly, just like you see about the speed I'm drilling right now through the entire thing. About like that. Maximum speed right there. Make sure you stay in the center. You see how soft it is and how easy that stuff. See how it's just that brown, uh, I don't know what it is, some kind of a fiber board. I, yeah, a lot of them are a fiber board, on, I mean fiber on the top, fiber on the top, and there's a piece of rubber sandwiched between them. Very thin layer of rubber. So let's go a little bit more. All right, I've already broken through the first layer. There, that's why it's important to have a very sharp drill bit. Okay, now, you see this black stuff right here? The black stuff, I think, is... I think that's rubber. Another part of the insulation. All right, we're going to go nice and slow. That's all we're going to do. Be very careful. Very careful. Don't get impatient when you're doing this stuff. If you're an impatient kind of person, find another hobby. Eventually it's going to catch up with you. And there you go, I have broken through. Now we hit reverse. Okay, there's our hole. Now I may have to ream it out just a little bit because the wires... Uh, where did I do with that thing? Anyway, yeah, here it is. The wires, uh, when you get them all together, are pretty thick. These are uh, 22 gauge wires, so I may have to ream it out just enough for all of the wires can slip down through that, that hole. And once I get them all the way through, then I'm just going to go ahead and tape it up and uh, with the exhaust tape, and we'll solder the wires up uh, later on. Alright, the uh, four wires are through, the red, white, and blue, and the black. And I will soon be soldering them up to the proper terminals after I trace it all out. And I'm going to double check on this transformer wire, make sure it hasn't been messed up any. In fact, I'm going to double and triple check everything right there. I don't want any problems uh, with this restuff wiring at the bottom. Let's go to the other side. Well, that's it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and slide this baby back on like this and go ahead and uh, take some of that old silver tape and get her, cut me a strip and just go ahead and run it around the side, the outside. And first I'll put a little piece of scotch tape there to hold it, hold it in place. And I'll come back and show you the, uh, the finished item. Well, there she is. Nice and solid. Okay. 
That takes care of just about everything on the top of this chassis. Now I do have to get the paint off right here off this uh, one socket. And I have one more uh, wire clamp, one of those little white plastic wire clamps. I want to put it over there underneath that tape and clamp it down to the chassis. I cannot think of anything else that needs to be done to the top. You know, just dis discounting the, uh, the tuner, of course. But everything else has been done. This has all been cleaned. Chassis has been cleaned. Uh, I'm not going to put that capacitor back there, that uh, 24,000 volt capacitor, whatever it is. I'm not going to put that on until later. Uh, filtering. Rectification is done. Can't think of anything else. All I have to do is solder the wires up underneath this. Okay. One more thing to cover. It's about this mystery box video I posted. <clears throat> I, uh... I got some pretty funny responses to this thing. <laughs> one 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 uh, user uh, or viewer said it's a it's a blow up doll. <laughs> no 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 blow up doll. And uh, another one said it's a uh, a sweep generator. It's big enough for a sweep generator, I guess, but that's not it. And then we had George down Texas, my old buddy down there. You know, he always comes up with some some really good uh, ideas. You know, he he thinks it's a uh, a case of preparation age <laughs> you know uh, up here in Arkansas we call preparation age uh, Texas toothpaste <laughs> okay so here's what I've decided to do a five dollar reward for anybody who can guess what's in that box or comes closest to being right now if you think that uh, someone else has already guessed what's in there and you agree all you gotta do is put down his his handle his YouTube handle say ditto with him and uh, if he turns out that person is right, then you'll get to split the five dollars. <laughs> That's it till next time, guys. This is John.